Hi guys, I'm Mika. It's very nice to be here with Peter. I've just gotten back from Europe and now I'm in Melbourne again. Right, and she's filling in for Beck, but she's modelling today too. I know, so sad. <laughs> Beck does it better, but I'll try my best. All right, so today we're going to be talking about direction of light and power of light. And this is where I find most photographers get completely confused about the power of the light and the direction of light. So what I want to do is just go through a very simple lighting setup and then show you what I mean by direction of light. So I'm just using a large octa, shooting straight down. So I'm going to set Maker up behind it. So I might get you, how high are you? All right, so I need to put a bit more height on it. Maybe about there. And can you just reach to touch? No, it was stretch. Just keep going until you can just touch it. I think that's about right, perfect. What I'm doing this for is it's the height I've got, it is about the same, I want Mika about the same distance behind the light as the height. And um, it's only so every time I move Mika, I can just get her to do that. And she's going to then work out, I'm going to work out that she is the right distance away from the light so she's lit correctly. I haven't taken a shot yet, so I'm just going to set up to get my exposure first. I'll get my overexposure warning turned on. And I'm just going to see how close I am. All right, so I'm about to stop off. I'm just going to turn this up a bit. Let's fire off another one. She's just going off on the tip of her nose. So I'm just going to take it down a fraction just to just give me a safe bit of room. So just turn the pack down. I'm just going to do another test shot. And that's looking perfect. All right, so the very first thing a lot of you must going to say, you didn't expect this light to look like that. You expected more a down light. You expected the big bags under the eyes and everything like that. But this is the whole reason why I use this technique to teach this. If we have a look carefully, so the way this is designed is this, we've got this parabolic softbox. Now a flash goes off inside, it illuminates everything inside, and then it hits this bit of like shower curtain material. Once the light hits this, then this illuminates and then this piece of fabric becomes the light. Now, a lot of people are thinking the light is traveling this way. It's not, it's traveling 180 degrees. The one thing I just wanna try and get very clear into you is that direction of light thing. So at the moment, our direction of light to Mika is where she is here. Now, if we move Mika over to here, the direction of light is that there. If we moved Mika over to here, the direction of light to Mika is coming from here to there. If Mika was to squat down, the direction of light to Mika is now that way. So the direction of light is the direction the light is going to hit the subject. So no matter where Mika stands, the direction of light's going to change based on where she stands in relationship to the light. The direction of the light is not where the light is pointed. It is where the light is coming from and traveling to the person. That is your direction of light, not that. That is your power of light. So what I'm doing with Mika is the most power of the light is going to be directly in front of the light. And as we come off from directly in front of the light, the power is going to go down. But the light isn't traveling in this direction. The light is traveling in a 180 degree direction. So Mika's been lit by this edge right through onto her chin and leaves a V down the bottom. And she's been lit by this edge on a steeper one. And the bigger this area is, the longer and softer that gradient becomes. So the direction of light that's hitting Mika is actually about 15 degrees off the camera angle. So the direction that's hitting her is this way. And this is why she doesn't have bags. If she came under the middle, so if we brought Mika right under the middle, another step, and I'm just going to change my aperture because she will overexpose here. So I'm just going to guess that I need to go up to about f14. And I take a picture now. This is going to be more what you expected to see. 
But that's because she's only been lit by this very front edge now and everything else has been lit from below. If you stand there again though, now what we can do now is if we work Mika to the light, so chin up to the light, that's cool, we can now light her beautifully with this light. So I'm gonna move Mika back to her first position and I'm going to get back to my F8 and I'm now going to show you. So the other thing I wanna do is, I find that color is also confusing seeing contrast of light. So what I'm gonna do is just get rid of color. Let's just do one of my channels. And just on a default black and white, I'm just gonna give this a little bit more of a punch in contrast and just give it a tiny bit of shadow fill in to fill in the blacks into her hair. So I want her hair to be black, black, but with detail. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just come in and do just a nice upper waist to head shot, cool. And you'll see this is just a really nice soft light. The shadow under her chin is very soft. And I'm 100% happy with that look. And this is how I create my shots, by using the direction of light and moving things. So, so if I just move the camera and I come over here a little bit, that's really pretty. You'll see we now have a different light because we've got this nice little Rembrandt there. And what it is, is because at the moment here, she's been lit all the way around her. But once I come around to here, She's been lit by this side, but there's no light on this side. And this is how we're getting this beautiful Rembrandt. With this, I can fine tune this. And because I'm in a big psych area, I have got a fair bit of room to move. So I can swing around a lot, but if I wasn't and had to work just with a paper backdrop, I could get the model to move instead of me moving. So if I moved Mika around here a little bit, that's it, now measure your distance. All right, cool, and if I come, here, and we just got an imaginary piece of paper behind Mika for this shot. I can come in here, cool, that's really pretty. And get the same look. And I can do the other thing on the other side. So if you kind of want to walk right round, keep coming right round here. So I want to put the Rembrandt on the other side, yeah, in there, but can you test your distance? That's really pretty. And you'll see that I've put the Rembrandt now light on the other side of Mika. So I've got so much room to move and fine tune. So I'm just gonna put a dot where Mika's standing and I'm gonna do all the fine tuning myself. I just wanna lock Mika down so I can actually fine tune this the way I want it to be. So the first thing I'm doing is gonna get my crop at the height I want. That's really pretty. All right, so what I wanna do is fine tune this light a little bit. So what I mean by fine tune, I want to get a little bit more Rembrandt on this, but when locked Mika into a position, so instead of Mika moving, I'm just gonna move a little bit each frame until I find the shot I want. Cool, cool. So I'm gonna take a couple of shots on each frame just to make sure, oh, that's pretty, that's really pretty. I'm gonna move a fraction, but I'm pretty happy with, that's about how much Rembrandt I want to own this picture. So it's only subtle what I'm doing. So all I'm doing is just slightly fine tuning this a little bit more to get my look that I want. So now I'm just gonna fine tune it. So, because I wanna then really get a hero shot on this. I'm just gonna get a little bit more height on you because you got your heels. I wanna make it a little bit more about you and a little bit less about the denim. Cool, it's really pretty. Thinking I'm liking this a lot. So now that I'm nearly completely happy, I'm just gonna move just a fraction. Now that she's squared up and not coming over her shoulder at me as much, I just wanna now fine tune just a little bit more. That's really pretty. That is so pretty. I think she's giving me my hero shot but we can't let her get out of it this easy. So all we're chasing is the actual hero shot. This is gonna be the shot that's gonna go on the billboard, all right? All right? And it's gotta come out your eyes. Oh, that's really pretty. Too posy. Bring it back to you. I want people just on your eyes. That's better, that's better. Cool, cool, cool. That's really cool, that's really pretty, pretty. 
pretty. Is it good to see your dogs and everything again? They are, thank you. See, I've got a glow in her eyes now. It's amazing what dogs do and sisters. Cool, cool. That's really nice. Cool, that's really pretty. That's really pretty. I'm just gonna have a look and see if we've nailed a hero shot. I'm certain we have, because I was happy with one of the other shots. Oh, these are pretty. There's your dog picture. <laughs> So you can't help it, can you? No, you can't. I love but this is, this is about feeling. This is the most important thing with headshots, learning how to feel something because you, your face will just change with your feelings. I think we've got a shot, haven't we? Mm -hmm. So you, I hope you enjoyed this. If you want to see more of the pictures I've done with Mika, I'll just leave them up above for you to click on. Yes. Thank you so much. <laughs>